Hi, I'm Delusion Dispeller. I'm here to bring you the information about the five love languages. The first love language is words of affirmation. Now, there are five love languages, as I said, based on Gary Smalley's book, The Five Love Languages. Words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch are the names of the love language, and I will see if I can post those somehow. Um, it's going to be tricky because I'm doing this on a tablet, so I don't think I can type in those words on there. You knew it using the tablet and not the computer because I don't have internet at my house, so um, bear with me. Anyways, let's talk about words of affirmation because this happens to be my fiance's main love language, and he is very, very adamant that he gets these words of affirmation from me and not the opposite, which would be words of condemnation, words of criticism, that kind of thing. That doesn't wash real well with him. So words of affirmation mean that somebody needs to be told things like you're beautiful, great job, um, you're doing well, I love you, you're so kind, you're so awesome, you're wonderful, I'm so glad I married you, I'm so glad we're together, um, you mean so much to me, those kind of things. That's a wor words of affirmation. What a love language is, is it's basically the language that you understand and feel loved in. And not everybody's are the same, and you can have a mixture of love languages. My love language happens to be physical touch, um, gifts, quality time, but my main one is probably the physical touch. So kissing, hugging, intimacy is very important to me. Now, because we've decided not to engage in intimacy until marriage, um, that has not been one that one of my love languages that has been uh, spoken much, you might say, I guess. But the words of affirmation thing is important, and it's really, it makes or breaks a relationship with somebody to whom this is their love language. For instance, if you don't realize words of affirmation are important to somebody, you may pick at them, like even playfully saying, oh, that was stupid, or you're such a silly goose, or what a dingbat, what a goofball. And if you do that to somebody to whom words of affirmation is their love language, you really wound them. Because that's the opposite of what they need to hear. They need to hear, you're a really great person, you're awesome, you're so talented, you're wonderful at that. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, well, this is the narcissist guru talking about all this stuff. Does she really think narcissists have love languages? Hmm, good question. I imagine every human being has a language in which they understand and feel loved. Um, even a narcissist probably does, although it might not affect them the same way it affects other people when you speak their love language. So, in other words, everybody's created with a language in which they feel that they're cared about. But that doesn't mean that a narcissist would be able to respond if you give them that um, feeding of their love language. Because, for instance, if... A guy was born as a child, a little boy, with words of affirmation being his love language, and all he was was condemned or told how wonderful he was, but in a false way. Then when you tell him how wonderful he is as an adult, he may think, oh, you're just saying that because you want something from me. So it kind of gets twisted, especially when a person is traumatized in childhood. So no, um, the typical rules that apply with love languages may not work in toxic relationships but in normal relationships if you speak somebody's love language you give them what they need you will have a healthier and a more satisfying coupling so hope that helped some if you have any questions post them down below the video thanks for watching stay tuned for the next love language god bless you bye